table last time, and then we created our print file on that table, and then we wrote our RPG program on that table. So let's recap what we did last time, so that as a refresher, we can start from where we last left off. And there are a few things that I want to again bring, bring back to your attention. What we need to do extra when you're creating a table that will talk to RPG, which we would not have to worry about if it's a table to which Java will talk to or ASP.NET will talk to. I believe the table that we created was NOV logins. Before we go back and look at the details of NOV logins, what we need to do different when creating tables for RPG is when you right click on a table to create a new table. So let's do this together so that I could show you that again, that place. So that the in-class example, which we're going to do by yourself, when I'm done with my examples so that you remember to do this okay so when you create your own table like this you right click on table new table is everybody in navigator no when you go to new table we just have to make sure that after providing the table name we usually switch to the columns tab right away to fill in the column information. What we need to do extra here is that we need to give our record format a name other than the system generated name because if we leave it to the system generated name it will going to give it the same name as the table. So when RPG will try to talk to the table if record format name and the table name are exactly the same RPG gets confused. Okay. So that is one thing to be careful about when you're creating tables for the RPG. Okay. Now some of you may ask, if I am creating a table using SQL, like I'm writing SQL, and I do not have access to any QBE query by example environment, how would I go about giving my table a record format name? So this is a quick way to figuring it out. You right click on NOV logins, Go ahead, right click on NOV logins. You don't find that information in definition, what the record format name is. You don't find that information in description. You don't find it in view or edit contents. Rather, in order for you to see the SQL behind the scene, you click on generate SQL. Once you click on generate SQL button, then you click on the generate button located in the bottom right corner of that window. Okay? Generate button located in the bottom right corner of your dialog box. Okay. Now notice when this SQL comes about, notice this text over here. Right after the table creation, you see this record format text is probably more visible to you on your screens versus this over here. Okay? So this way, it's, this is basically, um, let me see, uh, I think they added this new feature. But it only goes as high as font size 24. Okay, so, record format, rec logins. You may have to add that before you close out your table SQL. So if anybody is writing an SQL query, so you generally write create table table name in the parentheses you list your fields, each field is separated by commas, and after you close your table, so we created this table called NOV logins. So let me go to its definition by right clicking on NOV logins and click definition. In this table, we give our record format a name, which I just showed you, okay? We go. And then we had columns. We had three columns here. Username, password, and role. Okay. 
Then in the key constraint, we promoted the username to a key constraint level so that no two people can have the same username. And then we created a table with this description. Once the table was created, let me cancel here. We right click and click on view contents just for uh, the sake of adding some data to it, we entered some data in it. So this is how far we came in terms of databases. Then we also created a print file and then we also created an RPG program. So we're going to be visiting them next. So let's leave the navigator on go to the rational developer tool we created a print file sorry <clears throat> we created a print file to talk to the database in this print file we had two records that we created everybody here okay so we have two titles here username and do you have roles or no no? Yeah, okay. So we have username and role. Okay. Now, that was the very first record format called title. Then we created another record format called fields. And we, were, we only put one there this far. And we were in the process of building this one. Okay. Now, to recap how we do this. We do not bring in at the bottom a field table and drag and drop. Rather, we do it slightly differently. This is how we do it again. We go under properties. We make sure that the f new name matches the field name in the table. Okay? This is what we didn't do last time. We left it as field one. Okay? So this name over here must match the actual field name in the database. So my field that I'm bringing from the database will be called user, so username, so I will call this username, okay? Now, this field will actually be brought by putting in something called named field, okay? So let me drag and drop another named field next to it. This, will, this is what I'll use for roles. So the first one I already have for my usernames, okay? Now, let me show you the first one again, what else we did besides this, then we're going to visit the second one, okay? Then, we went to reference tab. Let's say that first one is the username? Yeah, the name of the field is username. So, so name is username. The new name down below is username. Okay? So we just brought in a field name and we gave it a name of username in the properties. We went to the reference tab. And in the reference tab, we clicked on the radio button called database reference. That's what we already did. If you haven't done so, that's, this is the time to do it. So we clicked on it. We went to the properties. We went to the reference tab and we go to the database reference. Okay. Everybody see that? Okay, now there I click on the browse button and that's how I locate the table. So as soon as I hit the browse button, we will do it again for the second one so that you can see it again. So everybody see this filled out? Okay, now let's click on the second item that you have. Okay, second item. Now let's change its name to role. So the first thing that you should do is change its name to role in the properties. Okay? Then you click on reference tab and click the database reference radio button. So you should expand your library list, expand your schema, locate the table, which is NOV logins. 
Once you find it, expand the record format and then click on Roll, which is the field that I want to link. And then click OK. The moment you click OK, it fill in the blank. Okay. So now, if the record format name and the table name are the same, then they will be same over here and that's what causes RPG to go nuts. So make sure that they are different and the only way to make sure they're different is to be done at the creation time. And the way it should be, then you save the changes, you save the changes, now you click on design reports, design reports, and make sure that everything aligns properly. Uh, if it gives me errors, I'm going to close it and open it again. So once you organize this, you save the changes again, if they're a little bit off. Then you come back to source, which is a tab next to design at the bottom. And this is where you click on compile and create PRTF, PRG4. Okay, that ended in PRG4 in the same place, N-O-V-E-M-P PRG4. Were you able to locate that one? Right? NOV EMP PRG4. Double click? Yeah. Okay. Now in this program, you will see exactly the same stuff as before. The very first line, can you tell if I'm talking to a physical file or a logical file or a table? There is no indicator there. All you are saying is the following data repository is on the disk. The next line is exactly the same as before that I will be writing my output to this print file. Okay? No difference. Okay? Third line, you still declare your end of page then you write your title, then you read your table, okay? However, what, what this table will read? The very first record, it's a prime read, okay? Do while not end of file, every time you go in and read the data, write fields. What is fields? Fields is the name of my, fields is the name of my, record format which holds the data items so every time it loops it'll gonna write the fields and I'm gonna go back and read the next record is there anything different over here than you would do with a physical file or a logical file there's nothing different from the RPG end the only thing that was different here was what in creating a table and in writing a report because you did not have the little field table down below to drag and drop you rather went and looked for and browsed the table and browsed the field, okay? So that was the only thing different. Now we will going to, we are already done compiling it, now I'm going to run it. You run, you check your spool file. Once you are done calling the RPG program, so you call your RPG program call NOV EMP PRG4, press enter. After that, you check for work spool file. Mm -hmm. Shift F6. And then you find your report. And then you display it. And here you see the data. 